Hi, I'm Danny Glover, and you're watching Joe Berg Today. Does the recently delivered State of the Nation address by the President bode well for the business community? I put this question to George Sebulela, who's the President of the South African United Business Confederation. I'm Peter Ndoro, and this is For the Record. Recently, the President delivered his State of the Nation address, mm. and I'm just wondering, as the uh, South African United Business Council, how did you view that? Look, uh, as a confederation, we firstly recognize that the president is unfortunately had to present this announcement at the time when the world is under siege. The president has unfortunately uh, missed a lot of few practicals that have been mentioned before, which we were expecting to see happening. One of those, for example, we spoken about the State Bank. We have not seen any implementation or any progress whatsoever in terms of what the State Bank is going to look like. And it's unfortunate that it is the, the center of unlocking the SMMEs, for example, in doing business. That's how you build the economy around the SMMEs. And that has not, has not happened. So we're still waiting to see what the president is going to say. The Minister of Finance, if you recall, in the last budget, also hampered on the state bank discussions. And therefore, when the president did not mention it in the State of the Nation address, it was a greater concern for us. The second important issue, we, some of us have traveled in many parts of the world with the president and many other leaders before. And we have told the world that South Africa, Africa has a lot of natural resources. But what we did not hear the president mentioning is, what is the progress of this local beneficiation of these resources that we own? Because we know through beneficiation we can be able to create jobs. And that is the challenge we have to say, I think this is an easy winner. We do have the resources. We do have special economic zones where you know, the in tax incentives can be made available for people that bring technology from all over the world. I must tell you that the resources of this country, look at platinum as an example. The majority of consumption of our platinum is going to Japan. And Japan builds catalytic converters and then they sell back the solution to, to South Africa at four times the price. Of that, uh, of that commodity. Now for us is, why are we not becoming game changers if we have so much of resources? So beneficiation is the center. Let's talk about uh, the integration of agriculture as we see it. We can talk about the land mm. in practice. We can talk about the opportunities that could be made available for black commercial farmers. But if you don't have capital, you will never uh, be able to, to succeed. So what we don't see, and which is current challenges in this country, is that when an entrepreneur or a commercial farmer requires funding, he has to go to land bank for land funding. He has to go to IDC for processing. Now, logic tells you that these two banks have different banking mandates. These people don't know each other. It means if a process of application takes you six months this time, this side, it's going to take you another six months this side. The transaction by that time, the price of the commodities have changed. The, the, by the time you conclude the, uh, the transaction, it's no longer viable. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, we call upon to say, let's go back to what we call agricultural bank. That will run the entire value chain of, uh, of agriculture then it makes it much mm. more easier because you deal with the same person and it must employ, by the way, uh, experts and expertise in agriculture. I think that's, that's the most important. So these are some mm. of the, the most important right. you know, practical issues. That and, we and you know, when I'm listening to yes. you talk, I hear a lot of things that <laughs> I've been asking people for years. Yes. You know, beneficiation is not a new concept. 
Uh, we can go back to the late 90s uh, for that conversation. For some reason, we haven't moved forward. But let's start with the state bank. And I just want to ask you, is it that a state bank is required or is it the legislation needs to change? Because instruments like the Credit Act make it very difficult for banks to lend. So parliament and government's own legislation is what's been holding back the banks. The banks are in the business of lending money. If they don't lend money, they don't make any money. So what is the state bank going to do with the legislation that's there that other banks can't do? Look, le le let me give you a classical case. I'm an mm. ex, uh, ex core of mm. APSA Capital. Mm. I come from the bank yeah. myself. In banking, there is what you call mandates. So banks have specific mandates to fund. And that mandate is decided independently by a team that has been put together and endorsed by the board for governance and the senior executives. Now, the question is, in South Africa, we have a very greatest challenge. There is a lack of understanding venture capital. So the risk element of funding has been set so high that any entrepreneur who can be innovative will never ever fund funding. And that's the frustration of what we see in the country. Let's look at 200 billion uh, uh, rent funding, uh, the, the, the loan guarantee scheme. Government has provided guarantee through DTI, uh, sorry, through National Treasury and uh, Reserve Bank. But irrespective, mm. only between 15 and 20 percent of that funding was utilized because the credit score does not allow these people to access the capital. That's the mandate with the banks. When people make an application, you immediately do not qualify day one. So what will the state bank do? So the because state bank, we're expecting it to understand that the biggest chunk of the element must also be an SMME bank, right. which must understand the risk element that sits with this SMME. So meaning they have to lapse the mandate to mm. have, uh, allow uh, this SMME to access the capital. That's very, very important. All right. And the challenge, of yeah. course, is that risk is high and the business failure rate of small businesses is enormous. So the taxpayers could end up with a lot of bad debts written off. Well, well there are elements in which you can mitigate the risk. Mm. There are very, very important elements. You can look at a project yeah. success and the likelihood of the project success as opposed to requiring a, an SMME or an entrepreneur owner to be able to give yeah. you an, an equity contribution, which is a problem. You yeah. already know that this person does not have a, a, an equity contribution. But you say, I fund you 10 million rand, you must bring 2 million rand. How do you, how do you expect you this person it? to bring 2 million rand? This is a conversation we can have yeah. for hours. But yeah. So let's go yeah. to other areas, because I know that you're very interested in the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. How does that play into uh, the South African context, particularly with SMMEs? Because uh, 4IR talks a lot about technology, new ways of doing things. And if you have no capital right at the beginning and you're starting out, that seems like a future thing. And yet, one would think that it may actually get you to the future much quicker uh, than if you don't deploy for our. How do we get that mindset into business generally? And is this something that government has to help you with? Well, well, government has to lead with the implementation of R. But remember, for R, it's a mist of it's a it's a it's a mist of many things. It's a whole of many things. So, for example, you talked about the policies mm -hmm. of the country. If the policies are not conducive, there's no 4R that will work. If accessibility to capital is not there, there's no 4R that is going to work. So, it's a, it's a value chain of a number of things in a whole. And it's not only technology, by the yeah. way, a, a 4R. It's about making things to be accessible and easy to do in order to achieve the right results for the economy. So, mm -hmm. so, so government has to lead. I, I know the minister has put in a, a team of uh, uh, specialists or experts who are going to drive the 4R led by the professor from Rao. So we're we, we waiting to see mm -hmm. what, what really the document they will be, be able to produce on the, the direction of South Africa in terms of uh, uh, dealing with the, the 4R. Remember 4R, 
it deals with very complicated issues and make them easy. Right. That's, that's the, the objective of uh, 4IR. So all the things that can unlock and make social impact to be successful, which impacts on the economy, which is very, very critical. Yeah. And, and at the bottom of all of this, energy, critically important. And I guess this is something as business um, you want much more focus on and to make sure that we get it right. Yes, indeed. Uh, we, we have uh, called upon the urgent implementation of the uh, energy resource plan. We can't talk only about coal, which is ESCOM. We can only talk about the IPPs only specifically referring to the wind and and we, we, we want an integrated resource plan. We haven't heard anything about nuclear so far. Mm. So what is the position of South Africa on nuclear? Yes, we, we understand it has been listed as part of the resource plan, but the question is the, where, the, the what must be followed by the how and the when. Yeah. That's, I think that's very critical. The what must be followed by the how and the when. And what we lack is the how and the when. Yeah. S-A-U-B-C. Yeah yet another business organization. Do we need more or do we need to make the ones that are there work better? Okay, what we stand for, the vision of SAUBC, we say we want to make South Africa to become the preferred investment destination in the world. So when 10 companies are, are, are sitting and they want to look at which country they must go and invest, we want to ensure that South Africa should be one of them. So how do we do that? We say we will ensure that we contribute to the economic, the economy of this country in ensuring that the ordinary citizens of this country can see their light. That's very important. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to do that? We will reorganize all the chambers, all the business associations, export council to be one other than running amok inde independently. And there you have a, a strong organized business that has a common objective. Today, as we sit in that year of starting the SAUBC, we have 66 member associations. Now that tells you something, that these associations were running independently with no success. And they have required a scenario and a platform where they can discuss and participate in the mainstream of the economy of the country. Because they were sitting in a no so-called VIP area. And in the VIP table, there were only individuals who were associated with the leadership of the country. And that must stop. Because some of us who have traveled in many parts of the world, in the interest of the country, when we arrive, we get embarrassed that the people that are leading the business are left behind. And for what reason? No, 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 justify, no justified uh, reasons why these people are left behind. Now we are saying everybody that leads a strategic business, because remember what is business? Business is associations. Anybody that leads an important business association must come on the table to help our government to achieve the right objective. Now, if you ask me about the others, we are the only United <laughs> Business uh, Confederation. Remember, we are a confederation. We are, are not an association. We are not a council. We are a confederation of business associations. And today we are deemed as one of the largest in the country. If in one year we've got 66, I can tell you, in the next year, all of them will be coming to us. Because people want value. They don't want status. They want value. What we are creating is a value. We are inviting every business association that believes it wants to make a difference to this country to come to the table. We're non-racial, non-profit making. We're led by highly esteemed leaders of, of business associations. And we are very proud for what we have achieved so far. And we wish you the best of luck. A lot of uh, South Africans uh, looking to the future uh, would definitely want your uh, confederation 
uh, to do what it sets out to do. Thank so we you wish so you the best of luck. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. and uh, talking to us on these important issues. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.